From electric vehicles to flex fuels, in the past few years, India has been trying to define a roadmap to reduce its dependence on fossil fuels. In our previous video, we told you all about one such flex fuel, ethanol blended petrol, and how India is using sugarcane to its advantage. In fact, India has set a deadline to supply 20% ethanol blended petrol by 2025. If you would like to know more about this, the link to our previous video is in the description. In this video, we are asking the question, can all these vehicles in India run on flex fuels? Or are new engines necessary? Before we begin, a reminder to subscribe to Deccan Herald's YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to never miss a new release. You can also follow us on all our social media handles. And now, back to our video. Flex, short for flexible, is a fuel mixture made of petrol and ethanol. It comes in different ratios like E10, E20, E85 and E100. E10 fuel contains 10% ethanol and 90% petrol. Countries like Brazil and the US have E100 fuel which have 100% ethanol. This is in addition to other variants. In India, all the petrol vehicles can only run on E10 fuel. Anything above that needs a different type of engine. This is where flex fuel engine comes in. A flex fuel engine is an internal combustion engine that can run on a mixture of fuels. For example, it can run on either 100% petrol or ethanol. It can also run on a mixture of both fuels at any ratio. So making the switch to flex fuels is not just about producing enough fuel as we have explained in our previous video. There are multiple challenges that original equipment manufacturers such as automobile manufacturers will have to solve to enable this transition. First, ethanol is corrosive in nature. So all the rubber parts will have to be moved to a different material. This means all rubber fuel lines that supply petrol to the engine need to be changed. Also, all the rubber components in the engine block should also be changed to materials which can tolerate ethanol. So, auto industry has confirmed to the government that from April 23, all vehicles will be material compliant. That means that the customer will not face any issues when the government and the oil marketing companies start uh, uh, you know, uh, blending 20% ethanol and supplying it to the petrol stations. So this is what is going to happen post April 23, but it is not going to happen pan India because it will move slowly from 23 to 25 and 25 onwards, there will be a uh, uh, you know, pan India 20% 20, 20 fuel will be available. Second, ethanol has lower energy per unit compared to petrol. What does this mean? If ethanol is blended, your vehicle will give a lower mileage on road compared to pure petrol. So, the automakers will need to recalibrate the engine to achieve the required power, efficiency and emission level. But in the case of higher ethanol blends like E85 or E100, automakers will have to develop new engines to go with the fuel. But before we get to E85 or E100, we have to face the E20 deadline that's coming up in 2025. Now the big question, what happens to the existing vehicles which are not E20 or 20% ethanol blended compliant? The possibility is as good as tossing a coin. The Society of Indian Automobile Manufacturers, or SIAM, had strongly recommended that pure petrol should continue to be available along with the E10 fuel. As auto industry, we had requested that we should have parallel dispensing, but obviously that has a lo lot of uh, you know, supply chain and logistic issues. So this uh, uh, work of doing this testing of the existing E10 vehicles, and they will be run on E20 fuel, and we will see what is the kind of uh, uh, challenges we are going to face uh, and uh, whether uh, the E10 uh, consumers uh, or the E10 uh, compliant vehicle owners, can they fill E20 fuel or not. So that's going to take some more time uh, to, you know, for these test results to come. The third challenge is a constant change of goalposts that the industry has had to deal with. 
Whether it was the transition from BS4 to BSX, CNG, ethanol and now the recent thrust on electric vehicles all have had a negative impact on the already stressed industry. Analysts say that we are spreading ourselves too thin with multiple goals such as 30% EV target by 2030 in the country in the same period. Well, further, if you know, we keep uh, focusing on every aspect of, uh, of alternative fuels, I think uh, that won't be the best strategy which would you know, be the result. So I would say uh, it's definitely not, definitely not a good idea to take uh, EVs and you know, uh, biofuels hand in hand. So as the OEM, uh, we are uh, on course as far as uh, Maruti Suzuki is concerned to switch over to, uh, uh, to E20 uh, compliance as far as the material is concerned. And that's where, uh, you know, the R&D organizations uh, are challenged in terms of uh, multiple uh, technologies uh, which we need to work on. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, labs which we had catered for certain requirements uh, of uh, evaluation. So uh, obviously uh, we need to uh, gather these resources, capacities uh, in order to do this work. Yes, it is challenging. Well, only time will tell if there is a road ahead for this roadmap. Till then, goodbye and don't forget to subscribe to Tech and Herald.